I'm Matt Chivers. I'm a British artist. Um, I work cross-disciplinary practice, primarily focused on sculpture. Actually based in the southwest of England, um, in a region called Devon. In my early years, um, I, I spent quite a lot of time traveling. Um, I hitchhiked overland to India. It was after my art education. Um, I, I'd spent two and a half years sort of living in a tent, really, basically cooking on wood fires and foraging food. And um, so it was a pretty wild existence. And one of the things that I was craving was to be implicated in the creation of meaning. The act of making was fundamentally important to me. I'm really interested in the notion of the migration of consciousness. At the moment, all consciousness on, on the planet, as far as we're aware, is carbon-based, which is why I'm working with carbon. You know, I'm working in the drawings with, with, with carbon drawing directly with the primary component of our own materiality. This is my studio. I'm working on a series of drawings at the moment. I'm working with my right hand and my left hand um, at the same time. So one half of the drawing is drawn with my right hand, one half is drawn with my left hand, and they overlap in the center. In the same way that when we think and when we use our left hand, we, we use the right hand side of the brain. When we use our right hand, we use the left hand side of the brain. Um, so sort of playing, playing with that, that idea. One of the things that I'm super interested in is the idea of extended cognition, that thinking isn't something that happens in the brain, but extends out into the world when we engage with material reality. I spent a day in, 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 in Tadasak sitting in the mist, like, you know, very, very sort of connected to the, to the land and getting a real, very, very strong sense of place. And then the next day, I actually went out on a Zodiac. Um, it was one of, the, one of the last whale watching trips of the season. And um, all of a sudden, this, this extraordinary structure loomed out of the mist, you know, the, the far, the whole front prints. And um, this beautiful kind of champagne glass shaped structure. Yeah, it's a really unusual piece of architecture. And my mind just went wild. It's almost like someone flipped the top of my head open and started pouring ideas in. Yeah, I think the project is a kind of, yeah, snapshot of the moment in time. So um, come and have a look at the sculpture. This is the main sculptural component of the exhibition. So this is um, made from uh, sections of a, a type of stone called impactite, um, which was created when a meteorite struck Quebec 350 million years ago. One of the reasons why um, I wanted to use impactite was, um, you know, because there was a very strong sort of metaphoric link between this impact site and the potential impact that artificial intelligence could have on humanity. And it's a lovely material. You can actually see some of the inclusions and crystalline elements in, in the material here. This has been, um, it's been cut um, using a robotic milling machine based on a form that was imagined by an artificial intelligence which was built specifically for the project. I intentionally um, left the, the memory of the, the robotic milling machine. I think it's, uh, it's almost like a, you know, a topography. Um, I think there's something very beautiful about it. It's like um, a drawing in three dimensions. So these are um, all single hand imprints made using raw clay. We staged um, a sort of data collection event, event at um, C2 Montreal, where we invited audience members to come and make, take a, pull off a piece of clay squeeze it, make a, make a hand imprint, and then it was um, digitally scanned. And then all of that scan data was used to teach an artificial intelligence how to make its own imprint. So as far as we know, um, this is the first time an artificial intelligence has been trained to make um, a three-dimensional object um, in, the, in this way. For 200,000 years, we've used our hands to, to manipulate the stuff of the world. And in turn, that shaping of the world around us has shaped us in return. You know, I'm really interested in that idea that consciousness could potentially move from 
carbon-based to something other. And I just think that's absolutely extraordinary. Like, you know, we're witnessing this unprecedented moment in time.